What's going on everyone? My name is Eric and today on the channel we have this guitar here. This is a 2007 Dean Dimebag Razorback in Slime Bumblebee finish. We're going to talk about this guitar in a bit more depth later on, but first and foremost, let's hear this guitar in a full demo mix. And as you just heard, that was the Razorback Slime Bumblebee in a full demo mix. And now let's talk about the origins of the Razorback here. So when Dimebag went back to Dean Guitar, he wanted to create his own kind of unique shape, just kind of like what he did with the Culprit and with the Stealth when he was with Washburn. But he wanted to make something a little bit more unique and something that was a little bit more aggressive and metal. And well, he kind of nailed it with this thing here. And some people will say it is a product of its time, given it is extremely pointy and it's extremely large. Some people love it, some people hate it. I'm a fan of the Razorback, but it's not the first Dimebag guitar that I'm gonna be looking for on the used market. <laughs> Now the original Razorback design was essentially drawn out on like a piece of paper when Dimebag was talking with Dean Zielinski, the former owner and president and CEO of Dean Guitars. They then made an actual guitar size template based off of the ML, which is what this is obviously designed after with a more modern approach. And the rest is history, but unfortunately Dimebag was not able to play these guitars because of his untimely passing. These guitars came out a few years after he passed on. Dean would then release this guitar here, the Razorback and the other ML and the other Dimebag guitar as the tribute and the signature line for Dimebag Daryl when the Dimebag estate was still working with Dean Guitars. <laughs>
Now going over a few specs, this guitar is specced out very similarly to other Dimebag guitars in, Dimeba in the Dimebag Daryl signature line. We have a mahogany body and neck on this guitar. We have a rosewood fingerboard, 22 frets, 24 and 3 quarter inch scale length. We have the nice V inlays with the razor blade at the 12th fret. We have the very pointy design, obviously that comes with the Razorback. Seymour Duncan Dimebucker in the bridge and a 59 in the neck. Now different models like the Razorback 25.5 will have EMG pickups and there's been other Razorbacks that have different pickup configurations as well. But essentially, the Dimebag Razorbacks always had a Dimebucker in the bridge and a different kind of neck pickup of some sort. The guitar also has a license by Floyd Rose Bridge. This would then change based on whatever model you had. If you had the Razorback DB, it would probably have a string through bridge. Just as some of those lower models would also be a bolt-on design with a regular C-shaped neck profile that was unpainted. This one here is obviously a set neck design. This one actually has the V-shaped neck, which is very cool because some of the other Dimebag ML guitars do not have a V shape neck, which is pretty interesting to think of that the neck shapes were very different between all the different guitars, even though Dime was a big fan of those V-shaped necks, and that's what he had on all of his USA Washburn and all of his USA Deans that he played in the early days of Pantera as well. We also have the locking nut here, we have the matching headstock with the matching body graphic here. Now these were obviously just vinyl print graphics here, and I'm sure the USA Custom Shop actually hand painted the guitar, but the import Razorbacks all had printed on graphics that were then glossed over. This guitar also has the two-tone paint job, kind of reminiscent of the Stealth, which is very cool as well. You also get the Dimebag Daryl traction knobs on this guitar as well, which is probably one of my favorite features on a lot of these Dimebag guitars. If you don't know how to make them, they're super duper easy. I've gone over the steps on how to make these traction knobs, so then you can actually turn these knobs from this one back here into these so you have a bit more grip when you are actually adjusting the volume knob on your guitar. And last but not least, Grover tuners, and this guitar here is made in China. And you can actually figure out where your Dean Dimebag guitar was made based on the serial number lettering. Y is for China and E is gonna be for Korea, and usually on the back of the headstock it will say made in India, made in Korea, or made in China. And just like most of the extreme guitars, that are on the market, they do all come with battle damage for the most part, especially if you're gonna be buying a guitar this extreme and this pointy. Now it goes without saying, you cannot buy any of these Razorbacks brand new anymore unless they are essentially new old stuff, or you're getting a back order on a guitar that you ordered maybe a while ago, and Dean is now just fulfilling those orders. Obviously that is all related to the Dimebag Estate leaving the Dean Guitars brand, and we're gonna see what happens after that because this is an actual Dimebag Daryl trademark design. So we'll see if the Razorback actually comes back later on in the new uh, Dimebag guitar line, whatever that is going to be, but I can only imagine we're gonna see some original designs like the Razorback, the Stealth, the Culprit, and maybe even the Washburn D3, which we'll talk about in a later video as well. <laughs> on these guitars. You guys know I love these Dean Dimebag guitars and the Washburn Dimebag guitars, and this one is no exception. The Razorback is actually pretty sweet. It's definitely harder to live with because it has way more points on the guitar. I found the Razorback, especially the earlier ones, are a little bit heavier as well, and especially when you throw these in the molded hard shell case, they're extremely heavy to lug around and everything, especially if this is gonna be your main gigging guitar, and if you're the only one that has to bring your guitars in and out of your show, you might wanna consider something else, but if you just don't care and you wanna play the shape and you love it, all things Dimebag, then this is probably gonna be up your alley, especially if you want something that stands out a little bit more on stage. The graphics, you know, take them or leave them, they are a product of their time. I really like the slime bumblebee finish. I remember when I was super young being able to see this guitar in person, the other Dean Razorbacks in person with the actual vinyl graphic and things like that. And I thought that was so cool because no other guitar brands were really doing that at the time. You had to have your guitar custom painted, had to be a special one-off order kind of deal. And it was really cool that Dean brought these kind of options and these aesthetics to the mid-tier guitar. This is honestly a really high spec import guitar, especially for the time. So if you want something extremely metal and very aggressive like this, 
Um, I would say definitely hold out for one of these, especially if you can find it and if you are a dime bag fan. The V-shaped neck is one of my favorite necks to play and it's super duper comfy as well. I would really avoid the lower end Razorbacks as well, unless you want to do a whole mod project or something like that. But definitely save up for something like this. You know, the Floyd Rose is easy to block if that's not your thing. But definitely save up that little bit of extra money and find the high spec import guitars like these ones here. And that's going to do it for today's video, checking out the Dean Dimebag Slime Razorback here. Let me know in the comments below if you have a Razorback or if you've maybe seen one in person or if you've even played one. I'd love to know your thoughts and opinions all down below. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you're new here, consider subscribing. I have tons more gear demos, lots more Dimebag and Pantera content, as well as lots of covers and addressing hot topics in the metal guitar community. Thanks for checking this out, and I'll see you next time.